who are you and the question is I am Nicholson I am Thompson I am Wolf <laughs> and so on no one knows the answer of this question you are simply asked who are you straight away you go to identify yourself the question refers to your body How have you become what changes? <clears throat> Childhood came, gone, changed. You say, when I was a child, I was playing, I was going to school, no more. Now, youth came, no more childhood. Same person, same body. <clears throat> young man. Responsibility, different responsibility, same body. Body is changing. Now, youth is also gone and you have seen childhood gone, now youth also has gone, now comes old age. So, you have the experience of childhood, you have the experience of youth also, Now, old age does not give you experience. You cannot say, when I was old, no. <laughs> It will take you away. What changes? The body changes. Childhood to youth and youth to old age and old to disease and disease to death. That and it. But you remain the same when I was a child, when I was a young man, when I was old man. The I remain the same and I is the one and everybody is the same. I will say I, you will say I, they will say I, everybody is saying I. I is one, the bodies are different. So this shows there is one absolute reality in all the beings which does not change. 
which is not a pilgrim, which has not to leave. So you have to identify not with that changes, not with what is born and dies. How you have identified with something which changes and you are changeless. Here is the question. When I ask you, instead of identifying yourself with that which changes the body, you have straight away identified yourself with I. With I. And all these years, generations after generations, you have been identifying this side with the body, with the mind, with the ego, with the senses, and with manifestations. And you have not been told to know who is this I. It is so simple, you see. What does not change is immortal truth, is eternal happiness, is bliss, is consciousness and existence, which has no change. So how could it be possible that instead of identifying yourself with that which changes, suffers and dies time and again. So here we are together to find out how to get rid of this identification with that which changes and identify with that which is changeless and which has been changeless, which will remain changeless. What difficulty is there? Simply you have to reason out. Only just your reason is needed. Just give a patient reason. Once, once a while, any time. Now, in this life or the next life, this depends on you. Because you are not going to be happy unless you solve this question. And this question has never confronted you. So you have to ask now, you have been asking questions to others, and others have been asking questions to you. But this question has never been occurred that you should ask this question to your own self. And this question perhaps will, will be the answer in itself. But you have got to be serious somehow. If you lack to solve this question, what is lacking is only sincerity. I had this trouble myself also. I also went from place to place, teacher to teacher, ashram to ashram, center to center, and no one ever did satisfy me right from Amarias to down south, from east to west. I have asked everyone this starting from Amarias, Rishikesh itself. East Swami did I meet with. Straight away my question has been, have you seen God? If you have, could you enable me to see God? If you do, what is the price? 
you aspire. On my own account, I offer you my life, service throughout my life, everything. <clears throat> so each one told me, you have to get into sadhana practice, pointing at their disciples. Look here. The people are sitting in this ashram doing sadhana for 50 years, 60 years. And those his disciples came to the rescue of the swamis and mocking me. <laughs> Look, this young boy. <laughs> he wants immediately God. Immediately God. And we are doing sadhana and there is no trace of God, let alone God, not even tail of it. Each one was making fun of me, but I will not accept any anything that I will accept. So my question was straight away and I was asking there is no deal in this thing, there is no practice in this because God is great, that's what I thought. He is all grace, He is all love, He is all majesty. I, did, I need no practice to see Him. Like sun it is. So I may have some trouble with my eyes and that has to be operated upon. <laughs> and no one could satisfy me. So it was a miracle that I found someone who comes in my own house, gives me the address. You go to this man down south and he will answer to your question. So I had gone there, saw this man, it was the time of his rest from 11.30 to 2.30, so no one was entering in the hall and I had occasion to speak to him because he was alone. Never did I know that this is the time of the rest for the Master. And it was open, the windows were open, only the doors were closed. Finding the chance, I immediately went into the hall. The caretaker of the hall, who was attending on the master, stopped me, you know, come at 2.30. I waited, then master was looking. He went to let him come in. So I went straight away, prostrated before the Master. And my question was straight away unto him was, Have you seen God? He did not speak. Can you show me God? He did not speak. <laughs> if you have seen God, can you enable me to see God? He did not speak. If you show me God, what is the price? He did not speak. <laughs> and if I am able to see God and you have, you are able to show me God, <clears throat> I will pay any price, my own life, lifelong service. That's it. He is quiet. I stood in front of him. He kept on looking unto me. He looked unto me. I looked unto him. So, anyway. Then, little by little, told me, God is not an object to be seen.
He is the subject. God cannot be objectified. He is the subject. He is not anything that can be seen. He is the seer. Find out. Find out who the seer is. That's all. Find out who the seer is. That's all. That's all the teaching. That's all the teaching. Find out who the seer is, not what is seen. <laughs> Instantly something, something, not only the word that I heard through my ears, this word had power and my heart was open because I was disappointed everywhere. No one, no teacher in India satisfied me. Everybody practice, practice, practice. Enough practice I have been doing, I had done and I remember what practices I have done in the previous life, as Buddha knew very well. Enough with the practice, I was fed up with the practices. And now was the time to see a perfect teacher who could show me something very new, very fresh, which I missed. Who can see the seer? Everybody wants to see, see, see. And what is seen is an object of sight, is an ego. So he said, find out who the seer is. So instantly he said, because my question was, can you show me God? <laughs> and instant he said, in time of course, and he was a student of mission, mission school. He was son of an advocate. He studied in a mission school. <laughs> At the age of 17, he left his place and he said, You are God itself. You are God. You are God. And I didn't have doubt about it. It's a matter of Minutes between between a student who is really very qualified, deserving, obedient, <laughs> and a perfect teacher. You don't need any practice. How far yourself? would be away from you all for this. It's common sense. I, I, I. <laughs> How far is I situated from you that you need any kind of practice? If it was away, then of course you need some vehicle by air, by road, by surface. But then here it is within, within of the within, nearer your breath from where the breath rises. What you have got to do only to give up your <coughs> effort. You need effort to get hold of something. You need some effort to imagine something. Imagine something is beyond imagination because you don't need to imagine because it is 
the fountain from where the imagination itself rises from, you see, where the thought itself rises from, what can you think about? So you are not to think and you are not to do any kind of practice or travel or any fix any destination. So if you remove all these imaginations and your intentions of different kind of intentions of practice and postponements and wipe out everything that comes in your mind about freedom or enlightenment or what you are even searching for, not even concept of search must rise in your and your mind are free. <laughs> so this this freedom from you itself is that which I speak about. There is nobody else to give you anything. You see, this is your own affair. And you have to do it yourself. If even you postpone, there is no problem, I don't think. If even you postpone, say millions of years, if you postpone, and at the end of millions of years, you are going to get it. Even at postponement, you are going to get it, and you will see you have not postponed it, you see, because when you have known, there has been no sleep at all, you see, there has been no ignorance, no darkness, you see. When there is a light, where is the darkness? Where there is knowledge, where is ignorance? When there is a rope, where is the snake? When there is no misunderstanding, where is the mirage? All creation of the mind. And you have created yourself because of imaginations. What is that imagination? Because I am not that. I am not absolute freedom. I am not absolute existence. And you are identifying yourself with something which is not abiding, which is not changeless, which is not eternal. This is the postponement. And those who have known it, they will do it now. Otherwise, like a grinding mill, day and night it is grinding. The mill, the grinding mill is working and all the beings are being crushed like grains. The mill is working. The stones are moving constantly. And beings are being crushed. Few here, there, one or two may be safe who are near the center, near the center pivot, <laughs> near the center pivot, very near the center of the millstone because they are near the center, nobody can crush them. So closer you go, closer you go near the center, nobody can crush you. And anything which is away from the center, from the self, from the absolute existence has to be crushed. So 
So, my dear friends, you are here. I am happy. And I am very happy for the results also. I am very much encouraged. And some people are giving me absolute joy. I am happy about it. But I am requesting every one of you who are here. It's enough. All these people who are here, it's quite enough for the whole world, you see, to give life to everybody, you see. After all, you need only magic to light, and there is light, you see. Only one magic can burn the whole forest of ignorance. Just strike one match, just one magic into the forest. Whole forest is a place, finish up. This is what the ignorance is. When you take up one, one magic. I am free and ignorance is but instant. Are you? Are you?